Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Hello, everybody. This is Danny Lambert with Plush Republic. I'm continuing along in the Mixed Panel course. Um, so already I've explained what Mixed Panel is, how to install it on the client side using Google Tag Manager, and how to install it on the server side in a Node.js application. Uh, so I'm going to continue along going through how to set up uh, Mixed Panel so we can eventually start leveraging a lot of the features that it provides. Um, but there's two primary ways to set it up. Uh, and then kind of like a third, which is the hybrid. Uh, you could set it up primarily client side, you could set it up server side, or you can do a hybrid where you merge client and server side. Um, so I prefer the third method um, because I like to be able to have uh, page level interaction data and then I like to have uh, the information that's hypercritical to persist and be accurate coming from the server. So things like uh, login, signups, orders, uh, I typically handle those extremely uh, sensitive, important events from the server side just because it can't be interrupted uh, by things like ad blocking um, and things of that nature. So I'll go ahead and we'll work through this course and showing you client side implementation first, then server side implementation, and then how to properly merge them uh, into a hybrid model where you uh, most importantly are managing to uh, persist identity resolution between the client and the server side. So in this first video, we already have uh, my application on the left-hand side with uh, the JavaScript, client-side JavaScript piece right here um, embedded using Google Tag Manager. If you don't have this uh, already set up, go back and watch my first video that shows impl implementing Mixpanel via Google Tag Manager on the client side. Um, so I'm gonna go through, if you ever need their docs, uh, here is the one for the client-side JavaScript and then here is the one for the server-side uh, node implementation. Again, we're gonna be doing client-side first. I'm gonna be covering um, each of these various events one at a time so we can really break down uh, how to set them up, why they're important, and what they do. Um, we're gonna skip over some of the ones like opting out of tracking because these are kind of more niche um, depending on how you wanna leverage uh, mixed panel, but there are more universal ones which are uh, mixed panel track, alias, identify, and people set, um, as well as a couple others. So we're gonna start with track and work our way down. So uh, track does exactly what you think it would do, is it tracks events uh, related to what people are doing on your website. So for example, I came to this Trailblazers site and I'm an anonymous visitor. Uh, I'm not making any track calls right now, so you'll see I had been playing around in my mixed panel instance, I'm in here in the live view, um, and I've been sending track calls before. But you notice as I come through here and I visit various different pages, uh, there aren't any events coming through right now and that's because I'm not making uh, any track level calls. So to show you what this would look like if one were implemented, I can hop into the console and I can take that exact script that they have here and if I go ahead and hit enter, I should then see this in a second or two um, within the, the live view here in Mixpanel. Sometimes it takes a couple of seconds, depending on how busy their servers are. In this case, it's taking a while. So there you go. It took a little bit longer in this case to come through, um, but here is that played song property. So obviously I'm triggering this manually, um, but these are the type of events that you would like to be able to send uh, from the client side is like page level, uh, page view level information, link click, link click information, things along that line. Uh, so in this example, I'm gonna set it up to send a uh, location viewed uh, track call every time someone views one of these location pages. So what I'm going to show you, I am putting into the source code for my app application 
Um, I'm using like EJS for client side rendering and I'm going to set up uh, some client side calls here, but you could set up the exact same thing in something like Google Tag Manager um, and it, you wouldn't have any issues doing it that way. So I'm in here on the uh, page setup for these individual location pages. So not this, but uh, pages like this one here. So what I want to set up is that same track call that I just sent uh, showed you, uh, but to fire that a location was viewed um, and to pull in what the name of the location is. So all I did is set a variable uh, on page load. I wrote a function to grab the document title, which is this up here, and store it in this location variable. And then I call mixpanel.track with a location view event, uh, and then with a property of the location and the title of that location. So I'll go ahead and save this, and I will uh, restart my server so this updates. Great, minimize that, close that out. and go back to the site. So now that I saved that, again, like I mentioned, I could take that exact same uh, uh, script that I added and put that into a Google Tag Manager uh, tag with an associated trigger and it would do the exact same thing. So you can implement it uh, multiple ways on the client side. But now when I go to one of these locations, I should get an updated event in here, right here location viewed with the property of broken spoke. So it's sending in all of these properties and it's sending in that location which we just set uh, right here. Um, so you can see that that's working. And how do you know that this is in fact being sent client side? Obviously if you do it in Google Tag Manager you know, but the main thing is the client side in Mixpanel will always automatically set a distinct ID. So when we start getting into the conversations of how to view persist identity across the client and server, this will be very important because the server side does not automatically uh, create a distinct ID and associate information with it like the client side tracking does, as well as all these additional fields that you get only from the client side uh, versus the events that you send from the server side, this won't be available. Um, so that's pretty much how you would set up just your uh, basic track call is you have the, um, general script already on your site and then you go either into Google Tag Manager and set up a trigger and a tag or you put it uh, in the, uh, sorry I'll pull it up, the template for your website you just create a function that's on page load or whatever your settings want to be on link click etc and you just fire that same mixpanel.track call uh, with the name of the event and the various properties that you want. Um, so what we're going to be covering in the next section is going through what super properties are. And then after that, we'll show you what you do to associate all of this um, event level data with a user. Because right now it's just associated with that distinct ID that I showed you right here. Uh, it's not actually associated with any personally identifiable information like my user ID for your application or your email address, for example. So uh, make sure you tune in the next video. We'll show you what super properties are. Then we'll go into uh, aliasing and setting identities and setting up people properties in the next video. So hopefully this is helpful. Stay tuned for the next one.